Concerning the Yellowstone supervolcano, something's going on. Dome-shaped uplift has been discovered inside the caldera, and this is what scientists reveal. They've uncovered a dome-shaped uplift in the caldera system, and what scientists suggest is linked to the intrusion of magma in the volcano. That's how deformation and uplift take place. Magma is coming in to the system. Kindly support my Patreon account because YouTube has again demonetized my channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Now, Yellowstone is a supervolcano, one of the 20 plus supervolcanoes found across the world. It's underneath the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and it gets its nickname as a supervolcano due to the ability to inflict devastation on a worldwide, worldwide level. It's monitored by U.S. Geological Survey and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory for signs that a super eruption may be imminent, something that has not happened in more than 640,000 years, even though we've had many eruptions since then. As the last super eruption was uh, 640,000 years ago. We had another lava eruption 70,000 years ago and another 80 eruptions since then. Now, the University of Utah, Robert Bob Smith, made a breakthrough discovery, understanding how the volcano system works after noticing a change in the water levels at Yellowstone Lake. His discovery was revealed by geologist Dr. Robert Christensen during the Inside USGS documentary on YouTube. He said one of the most interesting additional pieces of data came along after the early field work and the completion of the initial geologic studies. Bob Smith at the University of Utah was interested in seeing if we could look for signs of contemporary deformation in the Yellowstone caldera. He had recognized some of these indications particularly in changes in lake levels of different parts of Yellowstone Lake. We know that the caldera lies under Yellowstone Lake. Yellowstone Lake is found just about uh, the uh, southwest side of the caldera. So, uh, and because it's so large, the lake is so large, he felt that uh, there were indications that the lake basin itself was being tilted. And because of this, the lake level was rising at one end of the lake and falling at the other end of the lake. Dr. Christensen explained how his colleague discovered that the caldera was lifting below Yellowstone Lake. That's why this was happening. He said he was interested in seeing whether we could actually measure this by some direct means. So one of the things I did, he said, at the time was to get funding together to get the USGS topographic division involved in revealing. We felt that with as much deformation as there appeared to be, there should be measurable changes in elevations in the park. He says, we finally got the funding together and got that survey done, and the data was provided to Bob Smith and his group, and they, in turn, integrated it into a series of elevation changes throughout the caldera. The demonstra that dem they demonstrated that the caldera, over a 50-year period of time, had come up about two-thirds of a meter, that's about two feet. A meter is about three feet. So it, in 50 years, it has inflated two feet and correspondingly less elsewhere. Later studies would go on to show that this was normal behavior for Yellowstone as scientists observed periods of uplift followed by lowering. And one of the geologists at USGS said it breathes, it heaves, it uh, breathes up and down, it exhales, inhales type of thing. Dr. Christensen added in 2014, quote, so it was a dome-shaped uplift that had taken place and a rather spectacular amount of uplift indicating the magmatic system was active. Either the magma was intruding the crust or it was heating the hydrothermal system, causing it to expand and elevate the crust. Something was going on. There have been additional surveys that showed that after a period of continued uplift for a decade or so, there was then a period of stability for about a year, followed by subsidence, that means deflation. He says, so we know that the Yellowstone caldera is not simply going up, but up and down in a sort of breathing motion at times. 
its overall deformation does seem to be an infla inflationary one, but it's not a steady sort of thing, and there are periods of deflation. End quote. Now, this new study also suggests that the hotspot of Yellowstone could currently be in a state of waning. The findings were based on analysis of volcanic deposits that were scattered across tens of thousands of miles in this area. The University of Leicester volcanologist Thomas Knott said in June, quote, we discovered that deposits of previously believed to be to multiple smaller eruptions were in fact colossal sheets of volcanic material from two previously unknown super eruptions at about 9 and 8.7 million years ago. The two super eruptions took place during the Miocene and bring super eruptions from the region in this area to six, suggesting that the area experiences super eruptions on an average of once every 500,000 years. By contrast, over the past three million years, Yellowstone hotspot has seen just two super eruptions. The scientists believe this may indicate that the frequency of these events is slowing considerably. And of course, as others say, volcanoes are volcanoes that can do whatever they want, whenever they want. This by Callum Hoare on Express UK. Please leave your, co your comments. Thank you for your support.